This week, Siskel and Ebert review Jack Nicholson and Ellen Barkin as mismatched lovers in Man Trouble. Homicide detective Melanie Griffith goes undercover in A Stranger Among Us. And bumbling inventor Rick Moranis goofs again in Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. Never look something. at your dog. No. Never look at your dog? Okay. Ha! Oh, my God! Ah! Jack Nicholson is a dog trainer who falls in love with an erotic singer and supplies her with a dog in Man Trouble, one of five new movies we'll be reviewing this week on Siskel and Ebert, including Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. And I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune. Man Trouble is a complete disaster, shockingly so, considering the talent involved. The same writing and directing and acting team that created the important movie Five Easy Pieces 22 years ago. It seems that Jack Nicholson wanted to help a couple of old friends, writer Carol Eastman and director Bob Rafelson, who are down on their luck, but he would have served them a lot better, I think, by asking for a big rewrite of this project. In Man Trouble, Nicholson plays a shifty L.A. crumb bum, a married womanizing owner of a fly-by-night security dog agency. Ellen Barkin is an opera star who is a ditz off stage. She hires one of his dogs after she is harassed. If the attacker is carrying a weapon of any kind, be it a gun, a knife, a club, a what have you, the dog will, excuse me for saying, uh, automatically go for the testicles. At first, Nicholson is drawn more to Barkin's wallet than to her body. Very nice piece of real estate you got here. Oh, well, it's not mine. It's my sister's. Oh, your sister's? Mm -hmm. Where is she at? You might expect some kind of hot romance between these two stars. Forget it. The dialogue is just played for laughs. Would-be laughs. What a tragedy that sex is often such a barrier to friendship between men and women. Not necessarily. How desperate is this movie? There are recurring references to the guard dog's Some most basic dog. instincts, as if we care. Some percentage of the time, they are going to try to make vulgar gestures on your person. Uh, you just have to stay on top of them. That's pretty lame, and there are other stunning mistakes in man trouble. Guessing who is harassing Ellen Barkin is easy, real easy. Guessing how she is going to recognize him in the picture is even easier. I call out to my wife in advance the precise close-up that would be used, and she didn't need my help. The biggest gaffe, however, is the casting of Nicholson and Barkin, a real hot team, and not giving them any smart scenes together. Not one. Why? I wish I knew why, Gene. I don't know. This picture is dead in the water. Absolutely. There is not one moment of it that works and rather than recap everything you've said all of which for some reason i'm in complete agreement with i want to ask you another question yeah. why do you suppose they directed all of the actors to talk in a bored soft monotone i mean nicholson as a deliverer of dialogue is one of the most vibrant speakers on the screen and he and everybody else in the movie, they talk well, like this to each I other. I think they're doing, trying to do some kind of light comedy, old-fashioned comedy, no, and it, but, do, it doesn't work. You don't, but these it's are, low energy. Somebody should have said, no. let's pump it up well, a little these bit. Are, these are contemporary performers, to say the least, and to present them in this kind of fake world, present them in a the real world of, L yeah. of L.A., yeah. and then have it so phony, it, it's real bad. The other complaint I really have is, and this happens a lot with women characters, they're presented as professionals. She's a major opera star, okay? Yeah. Why does she have to be an idiot once she leaves the star? I mean, the stage. It doesn't make any sense well, at all. Well, because, it because it's, it's left over from, like most of this movie, for, it's just this whole movie is just bits and pieces from other movies, none of which okay. obviously inspired them to do. I mean, this movie is really bad. Okay, next movie. And our next movie is A Stranger Among Us, starring Melanie Griffith as a wild card New York detective who's assigned to investigate the disappearance of a diamond dealer 
who's a member of a closely knit community of Hasidic Jews. At her first meeting with the head rabbi and the parents of the missing man, Griffith realizes she's in a world very different from the one she usually occupies. Is anything missing? Money? Jewelry? Diamonds are missing, yes. How much are we talking here? Wholesale, about uh, $720,000. Wow. Look, I hate to say this, but I mean, if we're talking diamonds, we could be looking at a felony here. I mean, maybe your son ripped you off. I've seen it a hundred times. In your world, perhaps not in ours. Griffith soon finds herself strongly attracted to the handsome question. adopted son of the rabbi. This character, played by Eric Fall, is already engaged to the daughter of an eminent prince rabbi and tries to explain to this hard-boiled woman that he plays by different rules. Ariel, you can have sex without being married. You can. We can't. A rule. Yeah, a big rule. Well, that's too bad. Excuse me? Well, you're missing a couple of life's greater moments. <laughs> Why are you so angry? I am not angry. If you, you, your lips, they get very tight when you're angry. I I've am noticed not that. angry. Your voice gets very strident. <sighs> Maybe the movie gets as much mileage as it can out of this romance, but it's clear from the start that nothing is going to happen. And if the love affair is a no-go, the movie's criminal investigation is utterly laughable. How does she find the missing man? By noticing something so obvious that everyone in the room should have seen it instantly. Nobody just vanishes, especially if they're hauling a girl's best friend. And again, maybe he never even left the building. Stranger Among Us is a formula picture, and anyone who goes to the movies very much will recognize the formula. This is a retread version of Witness with a female cop instead of a guy and acidic Jews instead of the Amish. In fact, Variety's review was headlined, Witness. In this formula, there is always the allure of a prohibited love affair and the suspense of a murder that might be an inside job. But the movie makes two fatal mistakes in recycling this material. It has a love affair that nobody cares about. We don't think it should be a love affair. It has a criminal investigation so bubble brain and dib that the audience actually laughs yeah. at the revelation of the clues. Well, I, I, the only challenge I'm going to make to you, and I think maybe the fact that you mentioned the actor's name, Eric Thal, mm -hmm. indicates that I thought that was a very good performance. He doesn't have a whole lot to work with here because he's going to be portrayed as so holy. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, there is real affection, I think, for his heritage yes. and also for her. He's open, he's, he's enough of an open-minded guy that he's interested in her. Yeah, but, but you know, Gene, the, you could make a movie about two people in this situation. What they're doing, though, is they're hedging their bets by plugging it into genres. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be a crime movie at all. It could be about a man and a woman who are kind I, of attracted to each other, but religion comes between them. A serious film. I understand. The crime element in this movie is Absolutely last. Well, I'm just yeah. saying that there's one little, I think uh, last week or so, a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned one good performance in a bad movie. Yeah, uh -huh. This is one good okay. performance. First one by Eric Thal. Okay, coming up next, the hit sequel, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. Why are you closing the shutters? So one of the neighbors doesn't look in, see a seven foot baby, and call the National Enquirer. <laughs> Sun Chips. Sun Chips multi-grain snacks. A little sun never tasted so good. No matter which kind of bandage you use, if you want those cuts to heal faster, use Neosporin every time you bandage. Testing shows Neosporin helps cuts heal faster, four days faster than a bandage alone, and it helps prevent infection. So whenever you use a bandage, use Neosporin. Together, they make it better, faster. And for fast healing plus pain relief, now there's Maximum Strength Neosporin Plus. Hey. Sunblock by Sunchips. Sunchips multi-grain snacks. A little sun never tasted so good. Seven magnificent reasons to watch New York's movie station. One. I've been offered a lot for my work, but never everything. Two. Sometimes you bend with a breeze or you break. Three. This is bravery. Four. That was the greatest shot I've ever seen. The worst. I was aiming at the horse. Five. Six. Seven. That's a feeling worth dying for. The Magnificent Seven. Tonight at 8 on Channel 11.
Magnificent. A day at Six Flags Great Adventure. It's a world of fun. Hey, there's nothing like a Six Flags day with your kids. There's nothing like the excitement of Adventure Rivers. Over 100 great rides and attractions in all, including a safari and the new Batman stunt show. Share the fun at a theme park bigger than Disneyland. Six Flags Great Adventure. It's not a world away. It's a world of fun, Doc. Adults save $10 weekdays or $5 weekends with coupons at participating Pathmark stores. There they are. They're not millionaires. They're not celebrities. They're smart and thrifty. How? I didn't pay a lot for breaks at Meineke. Oh, the man who didn't pay a lot for breaks at Meineke. Let Meineke discount mufflers show you how to get high quality at a famously low price. At Meineke, you're not going to pay a lot for breaks. Want to see Jets football save money and help kids all at the same time? Call 1-800-477-WPIX now. Channel 11's got seats for the Jets against the Super Bowl champion Redskins Saturday, August 8th. These are $25 seats, but by supporting Channel 11's Care for Kids Fund, you'll receive two tickets for a contribution of only $40 and four tickets for just $75. All proceeds go to Channel 11's Care for Kids Fund, dedicated to organizations that help kids in your community. Call now. you can do to make a better world for a little boy or a little girl. Join Channel 11, where we care for kids. 11, where we care for kids. This crew is on a quest for adventure. They find it in a place called space. You enjoyed that. You're damned right. Star Trek, the next generation. Tonight at 7 on Channel 11. What's happening here? Is Wayne Newton in town? No, they don't do this for Wayne Newton. It must be somebody bigger. Listen, babe, there's nobody bigger than Wayne Newton in this town. Of course, I could be wrong. Big -a that big toddler is the star of Honey, I Blew Up the Kid, the sequel to the surprise 1989 comedy in which inventor dad Rick Moranis made his kids smaller. Now the baby boy gets too close to dad's enlarging ray, and it's time to raise high the roof beam, Carpenters. From? All right, I confess, I did it. Did what? pick a -boo! I blew up the baby. What does work for young moviegoers is merely the sight of that towering infant. Kids seem to get off on the fantasy of being the big guy or big gal in town. My children ate it up as the big baby strolled into a birthday party. Can anyone tell me where the bunny is? Yeah. You think it's still on my head? Ah. Ah. But what doesn't work in the movie at all is anything not involving the sight of the kid. Every other character is a mindless dumbbell with nothing memorable to say or do. I hope this thing has airbags. And so there was a crisis in the Siskel household. While my own children laughed at Honey, I Blew Up the Kid, I had to tell them that I didn't enjoy the film. I couldn't understand why the picture had to look so grainy and ugly. I couldn't understand why it was so underwritten. Why not have some wit like the Back to the Future series? Why not have the kid be a little older and be able to talk about his or her plight, the ups and downs, if you will, of being big, and maybe have him resist his parents' attempt to make him smaller. It's such a good premise for a movie, I hated to see it trivialized. You've given some good ideas for how it could have been improved. Yeah. I think it could have also been improved if there had been a whole other plot involving uh, the kinds of things we expect in a Japanese horror film where the grasshoppers or the locusts sure march on the big city because you could have, a, you know, the scientists in the command yeah. center and the breathless. You could have some stuff like that, but here it seemed that once they came up with the basic premise, which yes. they did very well, the special yes. effects yes. are well done in this film, 
they didn't really embroider it, it with very much that anyone above the level of your kids would enjoy. Now, I know it's a, I know it's a successful movie already, but I, I would have thought that this would have had the potential to really go through the roof mm -hmm. uh, if it had been supported. And I, I just don't understand Seems why like the effort... It's one level effort. Yes. They come up with the idea and that's it. Instead yes. of saying, can we bring this to another plateau by using the special effects just as the starting point for some right. real wit. That's why I cited the Back to the Future series, which I think really were, was a much better fully written story. Okay, when we come back, Cool World with Kim Basinger as a cartoon character becomes human and vice versa. Come to a magic land. A land of unicorns and goblins. A land of elves and witches. A land of great beauty and great evil. Wow. A land where one champion is the only hope against darkness. Come to the land of legend. Starring Tom Cruise. Sunday at 5 on Channel 11. What will happen if you picked up your phone and called right now? Well, in seconds, you'd enter a role where you're treated like a king. You will share a live one-to-one -one conversation with a beautiful woman who's there just for you. You can call anytime, every day, and you can say whatever's in your mind, or just listen. What will happen if you call now? Why not for now for yourself? The call is free, but you must be over 18. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Discover the distinction of excellence at Greco-Lincoln Mercury. For over 28 years, Greco-Lincoln Mercury has been serving northern New Jersey with quality automobiles at affordable pricing. So whether you're buying or leasing, Greco-Lincoln Mercury will satisfy all your transportation needs. How do I know so much about Greco-Lincoln Mercury? I'm Deborah Greco, and this is my father, Jim. And our family's name and reputation go on every car we deliver. Discover the distinction of excellence at Greco-Lincoln Mercury, Route 10, Denville, New Jersey. A cartoonist is dazed after he somehow plunges from the real world into the world he creates every day on his easel, the world of cartoons. And Cool World, a new animated film by Ralph Bakshi, is about crossing that line between reality and cartoons. In the Cool World, the cartoonist, played by Gabriel Byrne, meets his sexiest creation, the curvaceous Hollywood, a pen and ink version of Kim Basinger. I'm made of ink, but I'm no dream. <gasps> in a cartoon nightclub, they run into a noid or humanoid who's been trapped in the cool world so long he's gotten a job as a policeman. He's played by Brad Pitt, who you may remember from Thelma and Louise. Jack, you think she's got a thing for you, don't you? That's sweet. But don't flatter yourself, she's a waste of ink. Oh, yeah? The truth is, she's been after me and every other Noid who's come through here. It's just that no one's been insane enough to get involved with her. The transitions from cartoon to real world and back again take place without much reason as part of a thoroughly confusing storyline that never really creates any rules for either world. Now, I've been an admirer of Ralph Bakshi's work in the past, and I was looking forward to Cool World as his long-delayed return to feature films, but the sad fact is this film is a mess. The story cannot be followed, the characters are badly defined, and the animation is often so chaotic and overwrought and speeded up that it's physically difficult for the human eye to even perceive what's supposed to be happening. You can't read these images. I was also less than impressed with the way Bakshi combined the real and animated worlds. After the seamless special effects work in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, here was a movie where you could often see the seams and they were not particularly convincing. Oh, absolutely, you could see the seams. And, you know, I think that uh, following on Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which is a classic and which redefined and re-energized the animated uh, feature film, uh, you, you got to go up a level, or you have yeah. to be at that level, or you're going to come off real bad. So I think marketing this picture was a mistake if they weren't going to play at that level. And on Ralph Bakshi, I think the, the way to honor him is not to see this picture, frankly, but to go back and look at some of his early 70s work, like Fritz the Cack. I, I think that uh, 
this it just didn't apply. I think there was it, it seemed like it was made by a committee in some way. He yeah. farmed out some of the supporting animation, which you talk about as being whizzing by real fast. Uh, that was like it, it was farmed out. I think if he had if he had kept it a little more narrow focused, uh, maybe on these two characters, the uh, the animated character. Yeah, but even on on the no brainer scenes, like for example, the scene where the real human Kim Basinger is allegedly holding onto a ledge high above right. New York, and uh, the guy is trying to reach her. At no point is there ever the illusion. Uh, visually or dramatically or in any other way that that scene is really uh, taking place. I, I want to make one other point. The film is uh, rated PG-13, but I saw it with an audience of a lot of kids, actually, and I think that they thought it was animated and for them. It's not for them. Uh, it's really patronizing mm -hmm. toward women. Kim Basinger is basically playing a receptacle in this picture, and I don't know why she couldn't have been more assertive. Coming up next, John Lennon takes a vacation in the hours and times. Uh, Simpson, do I smell waffles? Mmm, delicious waffles, Jenkins. I guess some of us care about our bodies and some don't. Jenkins, I'm hurt. These are Eggo Nutri-Grain waffles made with nutritious whole grain. Nutritious? You? Absolutely. And no cholesterol, no sugar added, no preservatives. I'm impressed. Do they taste as good as they smell? There's only one way to find out. If you insist. Hey, let go of my Eggo. Taste the wholesome goodness of Nutri-Grain waffles from Eggo. At Hillshire Farm, we only select deli-quality meats for our deli-select lean thin slices. So every sandwich you make tastes like it just came from the deli. Like our new honey roasted turkey breast, slow roasted with real honey. And hand trimmed so it's 98% fat free. New deli-select honey roasted turkey breast. Now the deli's always open. Taste the difference when it comes from Hillshire Farm. Our next film is something different. It's called The Hours and Times, and it's a dramatization of the relationship between John Lennon and Brian Epstein, the brilliant tortured manager of the Beatles, a homosexual who was tormented by an unrequited love affair with the rock star. According to the film, which bills itself as more of a dramatization than documentary, Lennon admired Epstein but wouldn't love him physically. The black and white film covers just a few days in their lives, a vacation they took together in Barcelona in 1963. There was always the undercurrent of sex in their talk. Wasn't I right? Isn't she especially nice? Yes. What's your problem, Epi? Well, no problem. It's just this was supposed to be four days solid relaxation for you without any distractions. Look, we can still have that. She's just a bird. Birds are harmless. Otherwise, we're liable to drive each other mad. Left to our own devices. Care to elaborate? <clears throat> That's David Angus, excellent as Epstein, and Ian Hart as Lennon. When they finally get to town, they meet a Spanish businessman who Lennon, in a perverse mood, tries to fix up with Epstein without any luck. Why the hell did you go on like that? He was interested in you. Rubbish, in you, maybe. Yeah, well, I'm a happily married man, just like he is. Right, and as soon as he knew that, he had nothing left to say to either of us. What I like about this movie is that I would enjoy this tragic love story even if it weren't about John Lennon and Brian Epstein. The Epstein character is so well drawn and modestly acted, he's so sad knowing that a woman inevitably will come between them. Hello, Marianne. Oh, hello. I hope I'm he's not waiting disturbed. for you. Excellent performances there. The Hours and Times runs only 60 minutes. That will make booking it difficult, but I think it definitely has the heft and gravity of a full-blown feature film with first-rate performances and the kind of mature conversation and emotion that is really missing from today's homogenized and so often juvenile American movies. I didn't react to it that way at all, Gene. I think that you're a little overwrought in calling it a tragic love story. Have you ever spent a weekend with somebody that you wanted to sleep with and they didn't sleep, want to sleep with you? I mean, that's not tragedy, that's just life. Oh, I mean, but Roger, I think, let me explain why that's to, tragedy. Why is if that tragedy? Really, why is that okay, tragedy? Yeah. If you really love someone, okay, yeah. mm -hmm. and they won't love you back, mm -hmm. And why would you pull out, just let me stay with this, yeah. why would you pull out one weekend and say that that's insignificant when obviously these two gentlemen have known each other in Liverpool for a long time, are going to have a whole lifetime together, and that weekend stands for their, their whole life. I mean, you've heard of the concept of microcosm. I've haven't? heard of the concept of having a crush on somebody, not getting anywhere with them, and that's just the way it goes. This movie, to me, would have had almost no interest at all if it hadn't involved Brian Epstein and John Lennon. If these people have been yeah. named 
Tom and Harry. Okay. Nobody would have cared about this story, this okay. weekend, right. or this movie. Now, right, it is only because of the celebrity connection with the Beatles that it was even made into a film. And there's well, no insight here that's particularly about either one of these people. Well, I think I think there are very clear portraits about it, the two guys. One is a very special character. He's not just a rock star manager. He's a guy who is a tortured soul. The tortured second, soul? Absolutely. John Lennon? No. Not, oh. Rock star manager. He's just a okay. tortured soul. Tortured Are you soul, Brian to me? Epstein. Yes. I'll say it that way. Yeah. Okay. No. Yes. He's not a tortured soul. I don't think so. Oh, we, we, I think I don't think he's any more tortured than everybody watching this show Roger, has been on occasion. Roger, I think the man ended his life, took his own life. You don't think he's a tortured soul? Oh, Gene, look, this is just an utterly semantic argument here. Semantic? The, We're talking about a real person, and I think that we see a real person on screen. I'm amazed at your reaction to this picture. Coming up next, another love story with a canine twist that's a lot better than man trouble. Ready? Ready. Poppers, popcorn. Equal amounts. Yeah, you gotta be fair. Our gourmet popcorn pops lighter and fluffier than ordinary popcorns. Why, it's blowing the top right off the popper. Now for the microwave. <laughs> Tastes light and fluffy, too. As Grandpa always says, do one thing and do it better than anyone. He actually listened. The Nabisco Honey Made Telegram. Dear Mike, Mom says food at camp is bad, so I'm sending a present. Hmm. A slightly used present. Love, Maggie. They just make you feel good. Nabisco Honey Made Grams, in the Graham tradition of goodness. This crew is on a quest for adventure. They find it in a place called space. You enjoyed that. You're damn right. Star Trek The Next Generation. Tonight at 7 on Channel 11. There they are. They're not millionaires. They're not celebrities. They're smart and thrifty. Why do we keep a Christmas club? And we didn't <laughs> pay off our muffler at Meineke. <laughs> that Meineke discount muffler show you how to get high quality at a famously low price. At Meineke, you're not going to pay a lot for a muffler. If you've been hurt by anything, a car accident, a fall, a doctor, or a hospital, you may be entitled to a large cash award. To find out, call 1-800-LAWYERS-NOW. The call is free, the advice is free, and we stay open 24 hours, 7 days a week, long after most other lawyers have gone for the day. So call 1-800-LAWYERS. We're there, right now, to answer all your questions absolutely free. Siskel and Ebert's Video Pick of the Week, brought to you this week by Orville Redenbacher Popcorn. Do one thing and do it better than anyone. Now it's time for my Video Pick of the Week, a movie I think you might enjoy watching on home video. The whole time I was watching Man Trouble, the truly terrible new Jack Nicholson movie that we reviewed earlier on the program, I kept thinking of another crime movie with another dog caper, and maybe that was because Harry Dean Stanton, one of my favorite actors, was in both movies. In a 1980 film named The Black Marble, Stanton had a classic scene as a dog napper who has abducted a rich woman's beloved pet and threatens dire results unless she forks over some cash. Now, I want you to listen to me, woman. You have the money in two days, or I'm going to start sending you pieces of your little schnauzer bitch, all right? Now, you call your rich grandma, or you call your banker, okay. but you get the money. Like Man Trouble, The Black Marble was also about an unconventional love affair between a couple of cops this time, played by Robert Foxworth and Paula Prentice. Sometimes it takes risks to make a good movie, and sometimes the risks don't pay off, and maybe there was a good idea somewhere in the screenplay for Man Trouble, and they just couldn't find it. But in The Black Marble, there are lots of risks, and it's one of the quirkiest and funniest comedies I've ever seen. I recommend it on video. Now let's take another look at the movies we reviewed this week. Two thumbs way, way down for Man Trouble, the unmitigated disaster starring Jack Nicholson and Ellen Barkin. Two more thumbs down for A Stranger Among Us, the loveless romance and witless crime movie starring Melanie Griffith. Two more thumbs down for Honey, I Blew Up the Kid with great special effects, but not much else. And two more thumbs down for Cool World, a disappointing merger of reality and animation by Ralph Bakshi. Finally, we finally come to at least one thumb up, a split decision on the hours and times about an unrequited love affair 
between Brian Epstein and John Lennon. Gene admired the performances and the passion. I thought the movie was overwrought and very thin. Okay, that's it for this week. Next week, we'll be back with a special show on breakthrough stars of 1992, new and old faces who made their mark on the past year's movies. Lots of good video rental suggestions on that show. And until then, the balcony is closed. Television is comfortable, well-made basic sweats and t-shirts. Taltex, a new way of looking at clothes. Chuckles, the great-tasting chewy fruit candy. Fun to eat, fun to share. When you're at the candy counter, pick up some Chuckles candy. For that special time in your child's life, bring home Walt Disney's cartoon classics, Disney videos for your child's magic years. Fa Shower Gel is an all-in-one cleanser and conditioner, so it doesn't strip your skin dry like soap can. Feel the difference of Fa, and you may never shower with soap again.